The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, and we are looking on this last day of November at the market, uh, having sold off very sharply early on. Now, the give back of yesterday's game, first of all, the Dow acted very poorly yesterday. I mean, look at this big red candle of Friday, has an inside day yesterday, struggling today, makes a lower low. Now, is this going to be the start of some kind of a buy signal in the Dow? Because after all, we've gone from the 8th of November at the 36,565 all-time high to the low today of 34,744. Uh-huh. That's, that's quite a pullback. But at the same time, um, the technicals are deteriorating in the weekly chart. And that's just suggesting you can have a rally. But there's a lot going on in the mix of the Dow that says very mixed market in the Dow. Upside is going to be limited. And maybe the downside will start to be limited very soon. We'll see very, very shortly. Um, I'd say by tomorrow afternoon, where it closes is going to be important first day of December. We're looking at the S&P doing a little bit better because the S&P now is down 10 earlier on. Uh, the low was 46.18, but the futures were much lower. Look at this. If I go to the continuous contract of the futures, look at that. It almost tested. It broke yesterday's low and it almost tested Friday's low. So this is a pretty darn good comeback. However, <clears throat> look at that nine period moving average. It's just barely green. It is green, but just barely above the 14 period moving average. The MACD is very weak. Stochastic's terrible at 36 percent. On balance, volume is really holding very well. Relative strength is holding okay. It's in the middle of the range at about 51 percent on the daily. Look at the weekly. It got repelled from the Chapman Wave inside track. The um, zone that I call, that's the, the, the resistance level. The price is consistently, look at this. I mean, it, it's well over a dozen times since uh, June that this trend line has held and been the repellent area, gone all the way back to the lower part of the channel. So I suspect that this weekly chart is going to be very important coming up on Friday. Friday's close. Why? Because if there's a close near the high, near the, let me just go back now for the moment, near the cash index, S&P, high of 47.43.83, and we're at 47, uh, 46.42, we're 100 points lower, if there is a close somewhere in the 46.78, maybe 46.80 area by Friday afternoon, I would suggest to you that we could have a sideways consolidation so that finally we do get some kind of weakness in the candle of December, maybe even a red candle because it doesn't make a new high of 47.43.84, which is going to be needed to continue the leg B that's started way back from about August of last year. We've only had one peak, can you believe it, from the love of 2191.86, March of 2020, that's March the 23rd. And this is quite incredible. And um, the way it's acting right now, everything about this says to me, we're in a consolidation phase. Yes, it's rotational. And yes, there are one or two indexes that are acting pretty darn well, like the QQQ, like the SMH, the Semiconductor Index. But at the same time, I have to tell you, uh, everything about what I'm looking at suggests that some form of consolidation it has begun. It's unfolding as we speak. It has been unfolding for a couple of weeks now. And the only thing that could stop it would be a really powerful spike that takes the Dow and the IWM, the Russell 2000, sharply higher because that means that the others, the, the, the successful indexes, can take a bit of a breather while the laggards start to play catch up. This rotational type correction that we've seen for Yes, yeah, since the 2009 low March, actually, where we were long, the very day of the March low of the 9th in 2000 and, no, the 6th in the Dow, 2009, 
2009 of March, the, that was Friday, Monday, was the low in the S&P, the 9th. <clears throat> and we held that for about 18 months. So we've still got the long from this past uh, low of March the 23rd of 2020. Take a little bit off. We've held the core position. We've traded in and out uh, with longs and shorts. But that's why I want to keep that. And it's just going back to that 18,000 level for a very long time. Actually, it was 21,000. Just under 21,000 we got in. So that's the S&P. Let's go to the QQQ. And the X100 trading at 400.48, up 85 cents. Now, let me just get rid of this here because we are actually still short and still in the money. But this is going to be very important. Why? Because in, actually now it's time to talk. I haven't done this for a few days. I haven't needed to. But in the Chapman Wave methodology, <clears throat> there are three patterns that we look at all the time for every single chart. One is, is there a straight line up or down? Number two, is there a cup formation? Could be a V-shaped formation, but whatever it is, you're going from one point down, back to that point, and how you get back to that point and take it, take out that left side high is really important. Or there's an arch or an inverted V where you're going from one point up and then down again. Now, there are times <clears throat> where there's a sharp pullback, and then it, I count the peaks. If there's a peak A, or a peak B, and then there's a sharp pullback. If it takes out this left side low, that's usually pretty ugly. That's why it's red, dreaded H pattern, looks like an H. And the reverse Y is if you take out that left side high, you can go much higher. So with that in mind, what do we have? <clears throat> and in the Chapman Wave methodology, we're always looking for peak Ds. From peak D, the objective is to go from a buy signal to a buy mode to four higher peaks. It can go higher, but it's at peak D that other things can happen. Now look at this. This is the sharpest pullback we've had since the low of August, October the 4th at 354.38 in the QQQ, the index 100 trading vehicle. And what it's done is gone to 400.99, uh, left side high, peak C, pulls back, goes to a right side high with much weaker technicals, but it does go higher to 408.71 on the 22nd of November. I've made a big deal. Drink of water. excuse me, <clears throat> about left side, right side, time, price, whatever it is, what you're looking at is if there's a discrepancy in the technicals, that's all very well. But the most important technical that I look at is, is the 9 above the 49, the period moving average above the 14? If so, until it crosses negative, that can hold prices much longer than your patience and can hold it a lot longer than you ever dreamed. So in this particular instance, the QQQ, even though I've got a down arrow, meaning you've got a sell signal, they can change. Usually, if the 9 p moving average holds above the 14, you've got to wait out a little period to see whether or not it is strong enough to get the price moving to a new high or whether that's going to be the failure pattern. If it's a failure pattern from tomorrow, there's a lower high than whatever the high is today, that could make a peak A, a great peak A because it's under the previous T. If it then pulls back sharply and the QQs start to trade in the 395 area by Thursday, huh? We could be seeing the top right here in the H pad. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, we're back, Basil Chapman. So I uh, mentioned in the dent, and I, I showed it as well, the Comp Index, which is the uh, over 2,000 uh, NASDAQ stocks, uh, is trading up 19 at 15,803. And the, the, the statement was, I noticed the full NASDAQ acting much weaker than the QQQ. That's the Composite Index. Yeah, in a way, you're right. Um, there's definitely a, a slight difference. I've got this as a peak E all time high right there. And was at the 22nd, I believe it was the 22nd at 16,202.23. Straighting right now at 15,798. After getting close to the 50 period moving average uh, at 15,456 three days ago. Yes, that's what I'm looking at as well. And I suspect now this is a way that I've seen charters do this. I used to do it, and I found that it was, it was it's a nice visual, but it doesn't it doesn't really tell you all that much. Let me just draw this in. You see this rectangle formation here. Nice parallel chart. Look at that beautiful. It's like a little rectangle, but it's sloping at exactly the same degree degree from the top to the to the bottom. Um, and that says there's your containment area. And this makes it really easy to say there could be a head and shoulders even. But most importantly, the resistance is going to be at 15,950. Let's call it 16,000. So that makes it very simple to, to monitor. And here again, this is a gray leg A because under the previous A, the technicals are all very weak. Yes, the nine period is just barely above the 14 period moving average, but it is positive and that can hold for quite a while. So, oops, I didn't mean gray, I'm a green, I mean gray. There we go, gray. There it is. So that just says, yes, let's watch this. Let's go back to the QQQ. You can see the two together. Don't type it on the chart. Type it right there. One, two, three. So let me just state, um, uh, someone asked, could, could you just give us your big picture? <laughs> I don't know if it'll be a big picture, but it'll be a picture nevertheless. Um, have a look. You see this pattern right here? That's a little bit different because look what you've got. You've got a rising low series of lows. And if I try to join where we are right now at 400.99, it actually comes out slightly higher. 
So yes, I agree 100%. That's what I was looking at as well um, over the last couple of days, that the QQQ is t a tad stronger than the uh, composite index, the, 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 the Q dollar C-O-M-P-X. That's the way I get it. So with that said, let's just go on. I want you to show you something about the IWM. IWM, the Russell 2000, the small caps at 220.53, down 2.17. You know, that 200-period that moving average of 218.92 looks like it's a magnet. You're going to have to use it as a, as a springboard to move higher, and that has to happen really quickly. Number one. Number two is, you remember what I said about the rectangle formation? A rectangle formation can last, a narrow rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. In this case, from the May, uh, March highs of 234.53, Two weeks later, it's down to 207.71. Uh, and what we've done is we've just gone sideways, gone sideways, all the way to about five weeks ago where it popped up. And I said the rule of, for, for me in the rectangle formation is it is so powerful an attractor, it's like a magnet, that no matter how what happens, unless it closes decisively above it, which means it could go to a propeller shaft one to one to the upside, I suspect that the IWM is coming right back into the middle of the range. Well, lo and behold, there it is at 220 in the weekly chart. Very weak action so far. Let's just look at, I want to get to... Oh, uh, yeah, five-minute chart. Yep, sure, I'll show you the five-minute chart. Click. Five-minute chart right here. First of all, the one-minute chart went to peak F right there, and that was at about 10.07, 10.08, and 46.43.00, round number. Double tops, pulls back, and now we're at 46.27. I, I, you know, this end-of-month buying, I suspect that, We've pinpointed uh, a pretty much an important turn. We did that. We did that with crude oil for subscribers to opening call. Uh, within two points of the exact high, we did that within 40 points of the Dow's exact high. We've done that uh, with the various indices. We've not done it correctly yet with the SMHs. So far, we've done it correctly with the QQQ. The day is young. We'll see. But all I can say is that each one. The, remember. Bottoms are made in unison. Tops are made sequentially. And I think that's what we're kind of looking at now. People interpret what I'm saying is, oh, my God, crash. I have not once mentioned a crash. I've, not, I've heard other people talk about a crash. I have no clue as to whether there's going to be a crash. I don't think there's going to be a crash because of other things. But I do believe there's a rotational correction unfolding. I think that's the most important. The reason why we've got – we keep trying to raise cash – and even though we've had over the last uh, week, we've had stocks, uh, indices at all-time highs, I don't care. We're whittling away. We're trying to build up a really good cash position for the next big slide. I don't think the 1,000-point slide on Friday was it. I think it might be the internal low. I suspect there should still be a residual low. You know, I've talked about that for decades, about the internal and residual uh, lows. Uh, sometimes you get it in unison, so you don't even come back to the residual. The residual low doesn't even come back close. Other times you get a March low, like in 2002, and then 2003 you get, uh, sorry, a September low, and then a, a March low six months later that some indices don't go back to the, to the September low, and others make a new low in March, and then everything comes in sync. They rotate. So all I can say is, I'm looking at this as a rotational correction. Here's your five-minute chart at a peak D. It went right. You look at those rising. Look what a beautiful technique this is. Trap wave inside track repellent zone. You get hit once, twice, three times, four times. Just missed the fifth time at a peak D. Bam, right on peak E. Pulls back. What happens? The closer you get to a 200-period moving average, this pink line, the greater the chances are you're going to touch it. If you break above it and hold for a little while, you can make a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside, like a propeller shaft, like a barbecue a spit. You've got uh, you've got both sides of the spit spinning around. And what did we do? We went from this low just underneath, right on the trend line, which I've just drawn now. Uh, you went just underneath the 9 period moving average and 40 period moving average support. And you went peak ABC. And it breaks above and goes to D for a brief while, and now it comes down. Yet the nine period moving average is still above the 14 period in the five minute chart. So there's still some internal strength. So, with that said, 
uh, let's get back to our story here. I haven't even finished looking at all the different indices. So we've got the IWM week. We've got the TLT. This is going to be important. The TLT bonds, huge move up 2.10 at 151.44. You remember I've been talking about for a week now. I've been saying the XLF is going to be vulnerable. It made a high of 40.86 on October the 26th. And it's in a rectangle formation, a declining channel. And it's broken or below that. That's usually a negative. It's gone to your leg E. It might even have recycled. And that goes, I mean, for those of you who have asked, yes, Bank of America, we've still got that long. Ha! Huh. We've got that from the 31 area. We've taken little bits off uh, on the way up and hit 48.69. And now it's at 44, 10% correction. This is because yields going higher is what the banks kind of favor. Yields going lower is not and that helps the um, that helps the whole financial sector pull back a little bit and it sees the yields go higher as bonds the yields go lower as bonds rally. I'll be back are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Basil Trapp and Tiger Ignition's Hour. A lot of questions come in. I'll get to them in a moment. 24.40 up $1.44 on the volatility index. Now, I think that the volatility index, that spike that we saw just under 29 the other day, I suspect that, was that under 29 or right on 29? 28.99, uh, I'd say that's under 29. And right on 29. Um, that's something to watch because at this point, 
the Dow keeps, there are just little buying spurts that keep coming in. But if the Dow is still going to remain weak, uh, now it's only down at 223, it's coming back nicely, s and is down 15. We will see if there's a rotational aspect to this, because this was last week a peak, a, a leg D in the weekly chart. It'll be a peak D if there's no new uh, high this week above that 28.99 level. Most importantly, if it keeps holding in the 24s instead of slipping down to 23.60 or lower, that says that fund managers are buying insurance. They don't like what's going on, and they're buying insurance. That's just making it as simple as possible. And even more simple than that is just let's watch this closely because if after 1.30 today, uh, the Dow is is only down, uh, it's now down 202, but let's just say it's holding and it's really turning the, uh, it's at 34,935. If it hits 30, 35,000 at all today, just even once, I would suggest that that is actually quite good action and that we might see a close that's a lot better than where we are at this particular point. But if there's a, at between 3 o'clock and 3.20, if there's a sudden uh, selling spree and the Dow goes back to a minus 290 or minus 330, I'm talking about the Dow right now, that's going to that's really going to affect the weekly chart, even a rally would, but at this particular point, that would be terrible. And if the S&P, now I just want to talk about the monthly. In the monthly chart, you've got a leg E in the, let me just open this up so you can see it nicely. You see this inside track repellent zone, it's worked beautifully, it went right to the line, the red line in the monthly chart. This is the monthly on the right. And uh, the MACD is good, stochastic is really good at 91%, on balance volume is good. You don't have uh, you don't have uh, anything to do with actual volume itself here because it doesn't trade the diamonds trade. The, uh, no one trades the the, the uh, index itself. And what we're looking at is this red candle for the last day of November is suggesting that if in all of December there is no new high about thirty six thousand five sixty five. That was the high that was made on the uh, on the 8th of November. If there is no new high, then first of all, we have established a peak E. That there, there is now a chance that I could call this an alternate count E slash A. Why? Because there hasn't been a push below. It doesn't have to be a close, but if, a clo if at any point in the next between now and December the 31st, if there is any touch of 33,843.91. That's a penny below the low that was made uh, back at, uh, was that uh, end of uh, September? Uh, it, that was, yeah, that was a September low. That would negate the chance of a chap wave inside right there. Chap wave that will instant restart and suggest that that is a peak E, and now we've got to expect a longer time frame probably in the pullback. Now we're going to go to the S&P. Look at this. S&P, leg B. Look at this candle. It's just a tiny doji candle at this particular point. We've seen these before, and they meant absolutely nothing. Look at this doji pathetic candle in May with a high of 4238.04 and a low of 4056.88. And then boom, it closes a higher than that the next month. And it just continues the floating letter of leg B, leg B, leg B, leg B, leg B, leg B, leg B and we're still in leg B. So it has to be a lower high of 4743.83. If we do not touch 4743.83 all of December, that makes it a PB, finally. And all it has to do is it doesn't have to touch that. But you know what? It could have another small, tiny candle. Maybe it makes it a little lower low than it did, uh, what, three days ago, 45.85. But it, all it has to do is make a peak, and finally we get that peak B. And you can see buying intensity just keeps coming in here. And we're watching this very closely because I want to see whether or not there's going to be some kind of a rotational aspect 
to any correction. I think the Dow is kind of overboard. I wouldn't be surprised if it's ready for at least a decent attempt, rally attempt. And if it does that, maybe we actually see the QQQ have less of an upside action and, and more sudden sharp moves to the downside, just consolidating. We'll see. All right. With that said, that's the S&P. The QQQ has an alternate count. TSSC, that was a potential. Look, there it is. That's the instant restart that could happen here in the Dow. Wow, if that happens, that'll be miraculous. But we'll see what happens. MACD is good in the weekly chart. Um, Stochastics at 87%. On balance volume, uh, volume made a, a double top M-shaped pattern. And uh, so far, it's all kind of good. Nine's way above the 14. Price is way above the nine. Uh, the monthly chart is still fabulous. But there is a channel line, and that channel line says we just went outside of resistance, and now we're on it. Let's just watch what it says. Schumer says House may pass stopgap government spending tomorrow. Uh, thank you, Judith. I appreciate that. <laughs> They're trying to save the market. You know, I at this particular point, I don't think they need to say, you know, saving the market would be if we were down really sharply and they keep shoving money in. We're at all-time highs in some of the areas here, or very close to all-time highs. So it's just what I would say is it's business as usual. That's really what's going on. It'll be business as unusual if there is a sudden QQQ, NDX 100, sharp decline. And that decline takes, the, the, takes everything down pretty, pretty heavily. And then you're going to see what does it do. And, and rates are not pushing lower, but pushing higher. So this is, in the meantime, uh, is, I like the sentiment, but I'm not sure it's exactly what we have to worry about. Um, all right, let's go on. I wanted to show you the dollar. Sharp moved down, made a peak D with a sign in doji candle the next day, 96.64. And now we're looking at the dollar consolidating, dollar uh, weekly chart, doji candle so far, long-legged one. But I, I suggest to you that that's going to help gold a little bit. Uh, gold is now uh, up 8 at 17.94. So it keeps saying you can test this as many times as you want, this Chapman Wave Inside Track support level. But if gold starts to break down, Again, you're going to get two similarities. You're going to get. Remember, there was a period just for a, just a couple of like like two weeks where gold and the dollar go sharply in the same direction. It happens very rarely in the market. Just a couple of times a year. Most of the time, they're going to counterpoint, or they're not really overly influenced. But look at this. The gold has given back huge gains. It's only up 10 now. It was up 20 something. It went all the way to 1811. It's now 1795. It's really struggling. I'll be back. There's a lot to talk about. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Folks, we're back, and we're going to go straight to uh, Sharky over in Natick, Massachusetts. Hi, how are you? Hi, Basil. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Good. So I just I, I I was kind of looking at this this BKKT after it uh, corrected. I did trade it a little bit, um, uh, you know, down in the year of twenty five and up to you know forty five or so. Right. But I, I was wondering, I wonder if this is like a creeper up, like ARQQ. And I, I, I know that the technicals aren't really there, but I don't know if this thing is going to be like one of these creepers and creep up like, uh, you know, ARQQ did. So I just wanted your, you know, for a trade or, you know, w w what you think about it. So, folks, we're looking at BAKT Holdings. I believe it's a crypto platform. It, it was an IPO uh, about a year or so ago. Uh, back in the $10 range, it actually dropped at 1.29 uh, level and then had a little bit of a rally all the way to 50.80 uh, back on the 1st of November. So, uh, first of all, I want to congratulate you on trading this and doing it well. But I'm also going to say to you, be careful not to lock your eyes on this and say, oh, yeah, this is the one. And you keep because you could whittle away that gain by just look at this. It's made lower lows and lower highs ever since it made that yeah. high. And it's showing absolutely no signs technically other than a little pop up today that t yep. says there's a sign of strength. I would put it in the category of weight a little bit. The 200 period moving average is at 16.41 right now, up a dollar. At uh, But uh, BKKT is a symbol. Uh, if you look at it, you'll see that it's even giving back some of the gains today. Give it a little more chance, a little time. You know, I, you know that... In my newsletter, I, I focus a lot. did I oh, type that in the wrong place? Let me type it here. I focus a lot on uh, the cryptos because we've had it from the 12,000, uh, uh, 12,400 level in the, if it was the Bitcoin futures, but actually it was the GBTC, the fund from $12.40, both short and long term. We've had fantastic gains. And now it's getting a little tough. And the reason why I've had trouble with the uh, GBTC is because it doesn't trade overnight. I don't want my subscribers to have like a huge, this thing can move three, 4,000 points. I don't want you to have it one, buying one day and overnight it just just gaps down huge and you've got it. You have no choice but to get out to stop his head. So I'm just going to say I would, I'd avoid that. I think Bitcoin right now is in a, I've seen, been saying that for three weeks that it's making a high and that Bitcoin is going to be um, making lower highs and lower lows for a while, and then it'll try to stabilize. And as it's doing that, I think that gold is going to have more fluctuation, but still not a, a really big move to the upside, just a con sideways consolidation. I'm putting the two together as trading vehicles. If you're looking at ETHE, which is Ethereum, slightly different chart. It's much stronger, it's much better. And yet your uh, B, what is it, B? KKT is not participating. It is. It seems more uh, 
oriented towards a Bitcoin. I'm not sure. I'm just saying the chart looks like it is. So I'd be very selective. If anything, if you are trading, use the Ethereum, uh, which is at 46.57, up three dollars today, making a cup formation, trying to maybe double top, and then it will pull back. But keep your eye on something else in the area that's moving much better, and that says 47.40 is the left side high in ETHE, and that was the high of the 10th of November, and here it is with the high today of 46.85. It's getting close. The pattern that we were just looking at when I was showing that earlier on, this is the reverse Y pattern, green Y, because it should test the left side high, but it's really close. So I'm just going to say to you, don't be absolutely sure that you're looking at the right thing and the right time frame to trade your BKKT because I don't want to see you give back those beautiful gains that you made. And it's real easy to do because it moves. these things move so quickly. So rather, if yep. you're in the area, stick to the one that's got the best chart formation. And I have to thank uh, G7 and the Dan. For, uh, I, I was going to mention it, and then I completely forgot, and he brought it up again. ETH has a better chart formation. And that's all I can say is just stick with what gives you the best. Look, when something is making lower lows day yeah. in and day out, it means when it actually yep. makes a turn, it's going to be a very – today should have been, if it was holding near the 1690 level, 1754 was the high and the low was 1520, two, two, just over two points in this yeah. $15 stock. You want to hold – if it holds near the high, it says maybe the next day it will gap up. But I would just say to you, if you are going to trade it, trade it much lighter so that you have maybe tiny little uh, uh, losses. Why? Because when this actually turns, and I suspect just on a visual basis, today is Tuesday, it'll be probably early next week that it has a pretty decent pop-up. I would still treat it only as a pop-up at this particular level. But tradable, yes. So use your 120-minute chart, use some smaller time frames in which to time it. Okay, thank you very much, sir. And thank you very much for calling. I appreciate it. And have a great day. Thank you for calling, Sharky. So what we're Me looking too. at, All folks, right. is uh, F-U-T-U. I had a question about that. Can I look at it? Yeah, I'm just, I, I, you know, these Chinese, I think it was the Chinese, Futu Holdings, uh, down 274 at 47.79. I said it's got the dreaded H pattern. If it was going to turn four days ago, it was the absolute, well, three days ago, she was three trading days ago, was the absolute moment that it should have turned. It hasn't. I, you know, I, I don't see any benefit in trading uh, Chinese stocks at this point. Look at this, the FXI breaking down again. Um, I just, I, I, I'm, <laughs> what can I say? I, I have no empathy at all at this particular point. I think later on we will see the Chinese sector move, but not now. A couple of things I want to talk about uh, quickly. Let me look at look that, look at that, look at that, look at that. XRT, yes, XRT. XRT is the retail index, made that peak E we were looking at the other day. One of the reasons why I said I'm prepared to start shorting because we've got a lot of signs that say uh, this market is becoming a lot more vulnerable except for one or two areas that still show strength. Oh, no. My uh, short on the uh, uh, SMHs is now in the money. Oh, oh, oh. Well, maybe I'll put out something later today. We'll see. Um, in the meantime, 94.58. Um, the high was 104 uh, with a double top there, two, a champion wave two bar reversal, 144.31 uh, on the uh, 17th of November. Here we are trading in 94.54. I have to tell you, remember the rectangle? I spent hours, not hours, I spent most of a show, a couple of shows actually saying, be careful, that weekly chart is the same as the IWM, a long rectangle formation at highs, says you might be able to pop above. Watch out because you're going to come back into the middle of that range. Don, there it is. That's exactly the technique that I like to teach my subscribers to my opening call. And it's a leg C in the monthly chart. Uh, this this is somewhat vulnerable. Be, be, be careful. I had a question about Roblox, RBLX. Uh, let's RBLX. There it is. Up today, up 3.52 at 132.90. Made a peak E about six sessions ago, all-time high. Uh, it's pulled back sharply, and now it's running. This is good action. I suspect that it's getting close to some kind of a consolidation. 
the, I, as I record the, the Roblox and what else were we looking at? Just before we go to the break, before we go to the break, can I do it? Can I do it? One, two, three, four, missed it. Okay, I'll do it when I get back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Our company, Dr. Sign. Dr. Sign is the one I was looking for electronic signing. It's down uh, five at 246.12 under the 40, under the 200 moving average. It looks like the Dow, looks like the IWF. Just be careful. Yep, earnings coming out in another day or so. I, I would just be careful. Nike and, and Nike. Um, I typed that in the den. That wasn't very clever. Nike. Uh, trading, uh, yeah, there it is. Double top. This is the same thing I was talking about. The left side and the right side at 179, all time high, way back on November the 8th. And then it tries again around about the 22nd at 177.75. It's holding quite quite well, actually. But remember, this is in the retail area. And I think Nike could be helped by the by the Christmas season. I'm separating everything. Vixie, Dolly, Bondi, Goldie, just everything is in its own world right now. And all I can say is let's do this before we wrap up the show. The QQQ, the NDX 100, we've been waiting for a big red candle. I was talking about it moments ago. I said, yep, while well, we're short, we've been short from just about the very day of the top. Uh, but what we're looking at is at four. At 394.63, just now it was at 401.19. If this becomes a leg, a gray leg A, and it fails, and it takes out 389 support, closes under 389.77, but let's just say closes under 389 in the next day or two, all I can say is watch out. 
because now you're getting all of the different indices in unison starting to decline with cells. This is still not even a cell signal, although I've got a down arrow and all that. Uh, by the end of the day, it might be a confirmation of a cell signal. It'll be a cell mode if it actually cracks 389. I'm just saying, please be careful. And um, when the selling intensifies, that's where we could start to see something really. Uh, there, we are overbought in so many areas. I keep DEs and Fs, daily charts all over the show, but not even the weekly charts are starting to say, just be real careful. That's all I'm saying. Raise cash, be real careful, let the market tell you what to do. Have a wonderful rest of the day. I'll be back to Tom a little later on today. And stay tuned, you've got a wonderful programming coming up. For Larry, you've got Thinkers from Heroes. Stay tuned. I'll be back tomorrow. Check out Mo